I am Vinod Nageshwaran. Uh, I work for Business Insider. Uh, I have 16 plus years of experience in data warehousing and data engineering. Like any other data person, I'm a Gen AI enthusiast. Uh, I have uh, various research papers published in IEEE on uh, LLM model, um, AI models, and uh, machine learning models. Um, that's about me. Uh, now, getting back to the agenda. So uh, I want to start something like, uh, I want to start with the why part so that you get curious about what is what, right? So I want to start why CI-CD matters uh, within the Snowflake environment. Um, then I wanted to showcase like uh, key tools and uh, architecture overview, uh, which helps, uh, which really helped us to uh, you know get this in place. And uh, the best part is an automated testing and a quality check, which I really think which changed our uh, landscape of workload and uh, the way we deploy the things. I wanted to showcase that as well. And uh, along along with that, I wanted to showcase like uh, development strategies uh, within GitHub and the Snowflake, right? So uh, why CI/CD for Snowflake, right? Um, every every person I met today and yesterday, right, especially in the, in the Snowflake Summit, they are talking about AI, right? You see a lot of people around here, a lot of booth, uh, they talk about AI, right? AI agentic AI and stuff. How good your um, product, AI product or AI agent, is completely depend on uh, what kind of data you have, how what is the quality of the data you have in place. If you don't have a qualified and quality data in your system, there is no point of building like uh, whatever it could be, right? Agent AI. Uh, before uh, uh, before me, there was a good session about the Cortex AI agent where they mentioned they're going to bring up the MCP server. Like this is kind of a brand new thing, which is already in discussion to be brought in, uh, you know, within Snowflake. But think about this one: if you don't have qualified data, like good data in your place, it's not, that is no point of building any AI system on top of it. It's a junk in, junk out. The, call, the more quality of data you have, the more uh, uh, you know, the process, the business outcome is going to be. So uh, what we tried, we tried to have, of course, like uh, if you think about the data team, right? Um, not every data team can afford for a qualified a QA team in place. That too, that, too, that too, at this point of time where AI and things are coming in place, you need to have some kind of automated things, especially with the DBT. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, you know scope and options to automate stuff, so that's uh, one of the things I'm going to cover. Um, uh, you know that that's one of the things which will help you out with the why part, right? Um, of course, CI/CD is going to improve the speed, quality, and the trust in the data, and uh, especially with the DBT part, the data governance comes into play. Uh, where um, uh, think about this one, right? How many times, uh, like uh, when a new new people join in your team? You share the document with them, but you always have uh, some code, right? Hey, this is not an updated document. This is not the you know, complete uh, updated. That could be some minor uh, uh, you know, um, uh, backlog, right? How can we fix all those stuff? With, if you have a DBT in your um, uh, you know, infrastructure, how can we fix that stuff? How can we do that stuff within the CI CD pipeline? Uh, those six I'm going to cover. So uh, the key tools, as I mentioned, like uh, uh, the, this is mostly covering the DBT. Uh, in our infrastructure, we use DBT for modeling, testing, and of course for documentation. Uh, and the GitHub Actions uh, for automation and the CI/CD process. And the two other uh, little known stuff. Uh, if you're a really hardcore developer, I'm pretty sure you should already know uh, SQL Fluff and a Flat Kit for Python, especially if you're into um, MI stuff. Uh, so SQL Fluff is nothing but uh, you know. It is mostly for, uh, um, it's like grammatical check in your Word document. It's similar to that for, C you can think about SQL Fluff. Uh, but SQL Fluff is more to it. I mean, it's more than that. Technically speaking, what SQL Fluff can help you out, especially if you're in a, in a banking industry or a finance industry, or within your organization, you have a specific keyword which you don't want to be used as a column. All those things can be defined within your SQL Fluff config file. Uh, in your uh, CI CD pipeline, so that any of your developer accidentally use that file, I mean, use that column, uh, use that name as a column name, we can very well uh, trigger, an, uh, trigger an error. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's powerful, uh, the SQL fluff is. And uh, one thing I really wanted to uh, you know, highlight when you, when, you, when you get the SQL fluff kind of stuff, a validation framework in your environment, make sure you, uh, you know, get your uh, developer know there is a lot of other easy options available, meaning you don't have to format it manually. Say like uh, you run a SQL fluff, you get, you get a bunch of error. You don't have to do and fix that error manually. You can do SQL fluff fix on the dialect snowflake. It's going to help you and fix things for you. 
OK. Now, um, this is a conventional uh, GET workflow, uh, nothing new. So honestly, this is one part which it's a manual one. Uh, maybe next time this year, this, this, this would be the only part which would be the manual remaining, thing, remaining coding part could be a completely agent or agenting thing. So uh, very, very normal stuff, right? Like uh, developer take a feature branch and then uh, make all the changes to the DBD models. Then it goes to the uh, engineering team to review. Whoever available is going to review the code. And the PR is approved, we are good. It's going to get merged. If not, again, the changes is going to go happen. And the Git actions will be triggered. This is a very conventional. I'm pretty sure uh, most of you guys, if you already have, you're going to have this one. And I want to, I want to dig, I mean, dig a bit deeper on the uh, exact flow. So I, I was keep mentioning about the um, uh, thing, right? Like the performance improvement stuff and thing. So I say like you have a 200 DBT model within your environment. Uh, if you're going to run the DBT CI checks for every file, you're screwed. Like it's going to run forever, right? And it's, you're also going to pay a lot of money for your uh, um, uh, Git cost, right? The, the action file stuff. So there's a beautiful feature within the GitHub Actions um, where you can you can run the process only for a particular uh, if for a particular model. So I would sincerely recommend to make sure to utilize that option. Uh, that is check if uh, relevant files are changed. And uh, the the thing the overall flow is like say like you make a DBD change, a model change, get that deployed. Then uh, it come to our uh, PR. PR is approved. The PR is running now. Then the first step is build the environment, the build the DBD environment, so that we can run all the checks and balance. Right? We have to run the um, um, documentation process. We have to run the uh, testing process, unit testing process, whatever it is. For that, you need a uh, DBT uh, environment. So that's where the build environment comes into play. Then the lint SQL, if it's a lint, fi if it's a SQL file, lint it. If it's a Python code, do a Python lint. And then if it's a requirement change, I mean, if you are changing to a version of the DBT file. I mean, when I say version of the DBT file, version of the DBT itself, you can make that deployed on the fly as well. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to run it in a separate uh, deployment lifecycle, or you don't have to upgrade the uh, DBT in a separate way. Uh, you can all, you can take the, you can take care of upgrading the uh, DBT on the same flow as well. Okay, this is automated testing uh, I was mentioning about. So. Um, all in all, right, there are multiple options available uh, within the DBT to uh, do the testing. Uh, as you can see, uh, schema test, data test, and the uh, custom test. So um, one, of the, one of the major uh, thing which, which got introduced recently, um, uh, which, which I really like, is uh, uh, test type of uh, unit test. What it does, um, it doesn't, I mean, it actually takes the business logic, whatever you are providing in SQL, and it takes the and you have to provide only the sample data. You don't have to when 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 that runs, it's not going to actually hit your uh, database. It's not going to hit the Snowflake. It's going to just test the complete unit test based on the data you provide. Say like uh, you're you're a developer. You know uh, this particular table and table A and table B should have should be in a relationship, right? But say like uh, when, when you you're dropping a relationship column accidentally, when the, when you deploy and create a PR. The, uh, the sample data, whatever you have provided in the file, is going to get triggered, and it's going to say, hey, something went wrong. Look into it. That level of uh, automation you can do, this really helps in the process. Right? Again, as I mentioned, right, uh, the SQL fluff, this is how it will look. Um, so it says, like, especially as I mentioned, right, um, it will help you to format. Like, uh, everyone can write a different uh, SQL writing style is different, right? Um, this SQL fluff will really help you out on, say, you know, showcasing or uh, making every developer in sync. Just make sure it is on the same format. Uh, so this is how the sample will be. I'll show that in a demo as well. Um, I, I was mentioning about the unit test, right? If you can see the DBT test hyphen test type equal to unit. Um, uh, this 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 tells the process. The test what I'm going to trigger is a unit test, right? I'm not going to hit the database now. Because think about this one, right? For every every process, every DBT model you're running, if you're going to hit the database in a PR PR pace, you're doomed. Like you're going to consume a lot of credit within the GitHub action itself. This is a beautiful feature. I would really recommend people to explore this one because you are providing just uh, you know a couple of uh, um, sample data and you're really really testing the business logic. And uh, 
Uh, one other thing I really wanted to, um, which we felt like, which we recently got, um, uh, I mean, we introduced this one. Uh, I know Slack alert is kind of a mandatory in every other process, right? Uh, the thing is, um, I would, I, what we felt, it's better to have two different Slack alert, one for release channel, other one is like a, for a build channel. Build channel meaning like when the PR is getting built, when the, once the PR is getting merged, the, the channel, the, the set of uh, sequence of steps when it is getting developed, if something gets failed, you definitely need to get the, the uh, developer notified saying, hey, something went wrong, have a, uh, take a look at it. Uh, similarly, this is a release channel notification. Say like uh, um, you have, uh, um, you, you, you're, you're, you're fixing some bug in the production scale, and you wanted to notify your product owner saying, hey, something got fixed, uh, you know, validate the data again. Instead of we manually doing it, we can just make this an alert as well. And uh, deployment strategy, as I mentioned, um, so it's always better to have to uh, number of layers as much as possible, especially dev, test, prod, and environment, uh, production environment. The way we have things in place, uh, if there's a merge, it's just a test environment. Uh, if there's merge to the main, it's always a test environment. If we release that to a production, mean uh, it's an actual production release. So we have two different YAML files, one for test environment, the other one for uh, uh, production, uh, I mean, actual production deployment pipeline. Yeah, uh, lesson learned, uh, start really small. So if I, I, I'm going to show you mo uh, what kind of uh, YAML file we have right now for the CI-CD pipeline. It's, it's closer to 500 line, but we slowly built that. We started off with uh, hardly like uh, two or three steps. Then we, the one, then once we gained confidence, we started to deploy more and more stuff. And uh, now we are in a good space. But uh, invest in uh, especially the linting stuff, uh, be it a SQL flow or a Python uh, linting. It will help you in the long run. And I know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like try to educate developers to use uh, automated, uh, you know, linting. Even though, say, on the first instance when the linting error shows, don't try to fix it manually. There is auto fix options are available. Let me show a quick demo. Say um, I'm changing my uh, author model. Uh, we are a publication industry. Say I'm changing my author model. I'm adding a new column uh, called uh, uh, submit demo. Like I'm adding this one now. The changes are done. Now, the conventional thing, right? Um, adding this file. Then uh, I already took a PA, you know, uh, for, time, for time reason, I already took a feature branch, and I'm just making the changes alone. I'm committing. Then now I'm pushing the code uh, to the submit thing. So now if you can see, the moment I push the code, you can see our uh, uh, CI-CD pipeline got triggered. Now we can see all these things are running, which I explained earlier. So first, uh, the build is running, the DBD build, which what does that mean is like we are building a framework uh, within the CI-CD uh, thing to run all those tests, documentation, and linting stuff. Uh, then uh, build and uh, lint are running in parallel so that uh, once a build is done, uh, linting can be done, initiated in, uh, immediately. But one thing I wanted to uh, showcase, if you see that a lint snowpark is not running anything at all, though it's got completed successfully, because this is not a SQL, a Python file, this is a plain uh, uh, SQL file, which helps us to uh, save some dollar. Uh, it's still running. If you can see, once the uh, lint is completed, the basic full lint is completed, the DBT docs are running. What this DBT docs does, say like at this point of time, my use case is just I'm showing you only to run a particular column, right? What if I change the new brand new column, I mean brand new model? What happens is once this DBT docs, what is that? It initiate and update the documentation flow, and this is how it would be. As you can see, this can be done completely automated way. So the, if you have a new model in place, if you merge that, immediately it gets triggered, and the, our pipeline get, uh, updates the entire flow of the documentation. And as I mentioned, the unit test stuff, if you can see all these uh, uh, tests are running here, uh, types of unit tests. And this is how the unit test file you can see. So as you can see, we are just providing the uh, sample data. We are not actually providing the full data. This helps us 
to run the, I mean, test the business logic, rather hitting to a database, running an entire query, we are completely telling the process, this is the, uh, this is how, this is expectation of this one, just see whether it's working fine. Uh, now let's see. And I wanted to mention about the DBT compiler as well. The compiler is something which says, uh, you know, usually if you are a hardcore developer, the DBT developer, the one thing we do is like st straight away run the DBT run and straight, uh, start the deployment process. There are times where when the jobs get failed, it's, it's like a actual syntactic error you will get only at the run of the production run. So to avoid all those stuff, you can have a, something called a DBT compile in your pipeline. What it does, it will check for a synthetic error within your model, within your scope, and it will help you to fix that on the fly. Yeah, and uh, one other thing I wanted to showcase. Yeah, so as I mentioned, like uh, on the deployment strategy, the try to have uh, uh, two different uh, YAML file. One is for production, one is for uh, uh, test the unit. Te I mean, uh, test environment. So if you are releasing through uh, production. Always have a tag of a release version. This will enable to merge your actual code into production layer. And the test environment thing would be, like if you see, we don't have such thing. It's going to deploy on merge to the uh, pull request. Yeah, now we can see things are passed. And here, at this point of time, we already checked for the, we already created the documentation. We already linted the thing. Uh, I mean, DBD model. We already uh, tested the unit test cases, whatever it is defined in the file. So all this thing, all these things then are done at the CI/CD pace, not at the uh, actual, uh, you know, uh, QI pace. So that's how we really, uh, uh, you know, scaled up our application. We reduce a lot of error, and we reduce real. Uh, like a couple of years before, uh, we used to provide an hover, like uh, in the Jira planning, we used to provide an hover to update the documentation, to up, you know, do the testing. Now it really significantly got reduced. So almost 30% of our time got reduced after having this uh, you know, automated pipeline in place. Thank you.